Welcome to Solo Pro Radio. It's the only resource for self-employed professionals to grow their business. I'm Barbara Saunders, the Solo Pro Business Success Mentor, and it's my mission to help brilliant, successful solo pros go from floundering to flourishing. And I do that as the director of the International Association of Self-Employed Communication Professionals and as the founder of the Solo Pro Academy, where I have programs focused specifically on helping solo pros build a profitable, custom-fit business. Swing on by soloprosuccess.com and pick up your free Income Accelerator Success Kit. If you'd like to join us, zip on over to Solo Pro Radio on Facebook and like our page. You'll be able to ask questions, get to know our co-hosts, and find resources to help you connect and grow. Hey, let me have a, ask you a quick question here. Do you find your bank account running low as you constantly search for the next client? Are you worried about paying bills month to month? Do you love the freedom of being self-employed but not the ebb and flow of income? Would you like to learn the secret to stabilizing and increasing your income? It's not so much about doing more marketing as it is about the structure of your business. Well, you're in luck. I'm finally releasing one of my most sought after Solo Pro Academy courses, and it's just for you. Are you ready to set sail in your own kayak business model? Well, I want you to discover my new constant revenue system for the booming business. A, a kayak is a one person craft that's strategically built to stay afloat, no matter what's going on around it. It can take a hit and ride itself easily, it can shoot the rapids, or it can cruise along with the flow and it can team up with others or it can go it alone. In my new constant revenue system for the booming solo pro business, I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your business with profit centers, how to charge what you're worth so you can build the lifestyle you deserve. Register now at constantrevenuesystems.com. Now let's jump into today's show. I'm really excited for our guest, Mike McDermott, who is the co-founder and CEO of FreshBooks, Planet Earth's number one cloud accounting specialist for small business owners. In 2003, Mike built free FreshBooks for his design firm. He, he built it from scratch uh, to scratch his own itch, <laughs> and then he moved into his parents' basement for three and a half years to get FreshBooks off the ground. Since then, more than 5 million people have used FreshBooks to save time billing and collect millions of dollars. Mike and his team dedicate themselves to executing extraordinary experiences every day for small business owners who want to focus on the work they love instead of on their paperwork. You can learn more about FreshBooks by visiting FreshBooks.com. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for having me, Barbara. Yeah, I'm really excited to kind of have you uh, to chat about what's going on in in your business and how FreshBooks came to be. You know, I was really intrigued in your bio on your website that actually said you started out with a de design firm. Can you give us a little peek into that journey from the de design firm to FreshBooks? Sure. So, yeah, I, I mean, I guess... Um, you know, the FreshBooks story is pretty, uh, it, it came about because uh, I was running a design firm and I was using Microsoft Word and Excel to bill my clients. Yes. Uh, I had actually studied business in school, so I knew about accounting software and I knew about accounting, but it, it sounded like too much work for me. So I stuck with Word and Excel and one day I accidentally saved over an invoice. I got very frustrated and uh, I had all these problems. I, you know... I didn't know how much my clients owed me, and and uh, I didn't know, uh, you know, who had paid me. Uh, I didn't know uh, a whole bunch of things that really you want to know, so you don't you don't have to worry uh, about your receivables and where your business is at. And uh, I got tired of managing, you know, files and folders and all the stuff you do if you're using Word and Excel to uh, to bill your clients. So anyway, so one day I saved over an invoice and I decided to build a simple online invoicing service for my customers um, and for that design firm. It was actually kind of like a, like a web design and, and uh, an internet marketing kind of company. So we helped small businesses uh, build their web presence and do it in a way that helped them generate new business. Anyways, long story short, um, built this thing as a side 
side project. Ended up living in my parents' basement for three and a half years, trying to turn it into uh, a business. And, uh, you know, by the time we left, we were six people. And now we're about 120 people, and we're still growing fast. We're based in Toronto, Canada. Well, excellent. You know, that's quite an interesting story, especially for me. You know, my association is filled with a lot of right-brainers. <laughs> you know, designers and copywriters. And I'm intrigued that you went from a, you know, a web designer to creating an accounting software, which is about as left brain as you could go. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I come at it from a very right brain perspective, to be completely honest. I sort of recognize that, you know, we, we really build fresh books for people who, you know, are expert and passionate about what they do. And really, you know, don't want to have to learn accounting. So our, our vision is a world where entrepreneurs can successfully run their businesses without having to learn accounting. Uh, and the fact is that most small business owners out there, they don't really need to know about accounting. They need to get their invoices out the door. They need to track their expenses. But after that, you shouldn't have to learn too much uh, about accounting to, you know, to basically stay cash flow positive and in, in good shape. And so... Um, that's uh, our, our goal is to make, uh, you know, the financial aspect of managing your business so straightforward that you don't have to have a lot of accounting knowledge overhead getting in the way of serving your customers and being passionate about your craft. You know, I absolutely love that. I, I remember when I started up my first business in the late 90s, it was a design firm, and I had to take all of these QuickBook classes, and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't work. So I love what you're saying, and I know it resonates so much with, with our people. We want to do what we do best. Yes. Focus on your work, not your paperwork, right? Or having to learn some other arcane craft. So we've made, uh, you know, we know most, um, you know, most small businesses, their biggest challenge is, uh, you know, they would call it invoicing, an accountant might call it receivables. Right, right. So we made that part of, uh, we started with that, and we did a really, uh, made it really easy to use, but, you know, also able to automate things like following up for clients who are late to pay, accepting online payments, all that good stuff, and, uh, you know, added the other parts of accounting afterwards. So as I say, we kind of came at accounting from, uh, from a right brain and creative sort of approach and have made it accessible, uh, you know, no matter how much knowledge you have of accounting. Well, thank you for the world of right brains. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask, you know, this is something that I come up against a lot, um, is the cloud-based piece. You know, and you've been doing it for a long time. Uh, you know, what's up with that? Is there something to be worried about? And a lot of my clients, you know, are, are in their 40s and beyond, and they're a little scared about identity theft and that sort of a thing. Talk to us a little bit about what in the cloud really means. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, though it's funny. Uh, is there something to be afraid of? I worry more about, you know, I don't know about you, but I've had multiple hard drives crash on my computer, <laughs> right? You know, that's the scariest thing is you lose all your data and your business and your records. Uh, and I've certainly lived that a couple times. So I hate, you know, I hate using FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But, um, you know, here's what the cloud is. Anywhere, so accessing your business anywhere, anytime, any device. It's that simple. So, you know, if you go to a client's office, you can create an invoice for them or check how much money they have outstanding to see what kind of a check you need before you leave. Uh, if you go away um, to the cottage, you know, and on the weekend you're, you know, you, you forget to, uh, uh, that you needed to create an invoice. Well, you can open up your mobile phone and do that. Or maybe you're at, a coffee shop and you need to expense the receipt to a client, we'll just take a photo of it and add it to your expenses. You know, to my mind, what cloud does is it, it, it stops your business from being trapped in a piece of software on a single desktop computer and lets you access your business from anywhere. And what that does is, you know, by having it up to the cloud, you don't have to worry about a single computer breaking. Right. Um, you always have it uh, available to you, and it's backed up and secure, and, and uh, you have multiple versions of it, which are then backed up again. Uh, and it, it basically, 
you know, uh, it makes your business more accessible, easier to use. And since this is our whole business, right, making sure that your data is secure and available Mm -hmm. is critical to our financial well-being and success. So we're, you know, completely committed to to seeing that through. And you think about it today, there's things like online banking and all the rest of it. Well, this Mm -hmm. is really, you know, no different. There's all kinds of services, email or online banking or now accounting that are just available over the Internet. You know, I think that's so powerful, and it's a really powerful message. I just want to kind of underscore it for our, our listeners that, you know, you don't have to have a biz, you know your business records stuck in a file where they're flammable, <laughs> yeah. it, which is a little concerning. It, it, this also, you're kind of talking about making your business truly portable. Well, yeah, I would say it's not so much that it's portable, that it's like always accessible. Right? It's not like you need to carry it around. It's more like it's just going to be wherever you go. You know, So you can go take your laptop and plug it in somewhere else and your business is going to be there. Or you can take your phone and you know, be somewhere else and your business is going to be there. Or you can you know, open up your iPad on the couch at night and your business is going to be there. And that's, you know, when I think about, um, I think of entrepreneurs as like super creative, really, really busy people. And... Um, you know, I think about us enabling busy people. We don't want to stop you from being busy. You know, you probably wouldn't have it any other way. We want you to enable you to be busy and be more effective when you're busy and not waste time because, oh, I need that file, but it's stuck back at the office or on my desk in the basement and I don't want to go down there. No, you should just be able to get it now. So that's what we do. You know, that's brilliant, and it really kind of goes along with, you know, I've really seen a, a real evolution in business over the last 15, 20 years um, where business actually is more in the palm of the person's hand, and you actually have that control. And it seems to me that's kind of what you're you're getting to. That, that's exactly right. That's where we're at today, and, you know, we're waiting for you to join us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Resistance is futile, right? I, I yeah I can't see the uh, I can't see the point. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask. You know, we're we're down here in the in the lower North America part, <laughs> and we have to deal with the IRS. Yep. Uh, you know, talk to us about. You know, I, I know uh, a lot of accountants are QuickBook friendly, and they just push that QuickBooks. How how do CPAs react to FreshBooks? Well, uh, to be completely honest, there's many who haven't heard of us yet. So uh, the first thing to do is ask your accountant if they've heard of us. Um, you know, let's say you're a, a, you know, a FreshBooks user, and if they haven't, you know, get them to check it out and see what they think. And if they don't like it, well, then connect them with us, and we can help explain it to them. Because what we have found is that there are a whole bunch of accountants out there who are really pragmatic. You know, there's yeah. kind of like two accountants we think about. There's like people who are, you know, really dogmatically in favor of accounting standards, and there's ones who are who are uh, pragmatic. And, you know, the sad truth is, but Intuit will tell you this on their earnings calls, is a huge number of people who buy their software never take it out of the package. <laughs> and then if they do, they try and install it, and they never actually get it successfully so- set up. And if you go ask an accountant who recommends QuickBooks, you know, did you ever refer QuickBooks to somebody else and they not use it, well, the answer would be yes. And so what you start to uncover there is there's a whole landscape of business owners for whom, you know, QuickBooks is just not a fit. Mm-hmm. It's a great tool, you know, if you have like 10 to 100 employees and you got to manage some stuff. And I've actually used it for that myself. Uh, I've used FreshBooks, and we've actually just outgrown QuickBooks. So, I used, for, you know, we used uh, basically Word and Excel and FreshBooks, and then we started using... Um, uh, I'm sorry, QuickBooks, and we just outgrew that, and now we're using NetSuite. And and so the important thing, you know, and this is for accountants to know as well, is you need to look at which customers you have and get the right thing for them. And, uh, you know, what's different today than was the case for, frankly, the last 20 or 30 years is there's actually now some choices out there in the market that weren't there before. And so what FreshBooks is, is really a choice. It's an available service that's purpose-built for a certain kind of customer. We bring about choice that's never been there. And, um, you know, and so when an accountant looks at the lens and says, oh, yeah, I have those clients who don't understand QuickBooks, will never use it, and bring me their stuff in Word and Excel, 
Well, that's where we come in. You know, that's a client that should be using FreshBooks. And then at the end of the year, you're going to have all the expenses and uh, all the uh, invoices properly tracked and accounted for. And then you can just give a simple Excel file to your accountant, and they can help you with your tax return. You know, that's so brilliant. I love what you said about, you know, it's a tool, and it needs to fit the, the user and how the user is going to use it. You know, I think that is such an important message for, for self-employed professionals also. You know, we're not really hiring, a cook, you know, bookkeepers to do our books. We want to keep our hands on our money and know what's going on there. So we need a tool that works for us. Yeah, I mean, you might be filing your taxes on your own or, you know, visiting the your accountant, at, you know, once a year or maybe quarterly, you know, just to get stuff together, but it's not like you have somebody coming and doing the books every week, right? And that's mm. so that's the lens through which, you know, a QuickBooks really fits. Right, right. And you can get in trouble if you don't do, you know, handle your money every day if you need if it needs it. You know, I was visiting your website and I loved I love that you have this add ons page. So you actually have a lot of additional resources that work with quit with uh, FreshBooks as well. You know, talk to us a little bit about that, and what's the thinking behind that? Yeah, so, you know, again, back to FreshBooks being, you know, the right tool for a certain kind of customer. Well, at the end of the day, you know, we're just your accounting. We're not everything you may or may not need to run your business. So maybe you use email marketing for something. And so we have a, a simple integration with um, with MailChimp so you can email your customers. Um uh, I, could go, I could go on, but there's, we integrate with a bunch of different ways to collect payment, whether it be PayPal or like 12 other companies that you can collect online payments with. Um, there are CRM, whether it be Salesforce or customer service, it be Zendesk. These are companies that offer other tools that a small business owner may want to use. They're not accounting. And, but they're complementary to the kind of data that we collect. This is one of the beautiful things about working in the cloud is you can kind of stitch together these applications, have them talk to each other, and, uh, you know, frankly, have what you want uh, to do the work that you need without having some big, complicated mess of a platform that you don't understand at the end of the day. You just get these purpose-built applications that do what you need so you can move on and get things done with your day. Well, and it really is giving you the power you know, of these, of these incredible tools that normally, you know, 20 years ago, there's no way a solo-based business could have, have afforded it. That's exactly right. And so the Internet's been this wonderfully democratizing, you know, thing where, you know, we're really able to empower individuals, you know, with, you know, frankly, tools and services. And frankly, customer service, that's a big part of what FreshBooks is about. You can call us get us on the phone and we'll help you if you do have a problem. That's really important about what we do. But but I guess the point I'm really trying to make is you need, need used to need to have an IT team and have this installed on a server and all these things. And now you can just go and sign up for free online uh, and try it out, which is uh, a huge advance. That's hugely powerful. And it's, uh, it, it takes away a bit of the fear, I think, that uh, – um, some solos are just a little scared to try something new, and, and you know, allowing them to do that makes it so much easier. Yep. You know, I wanted to break in. You just wrote a book, and so I wanted to chat with you a little about that because I just absolutely love it. I just finished it, um, Breaking the Time Barrier, How to Unlock Your True Earning Potential. Let me ask, you know, what made you, what, what made you think of putting this book together? So... You know, at my heart, I'm an entrepreneur, and when I was running my design business, I learned a bunch of things. For about the last 10 years, I, you know, forgot about most of those things. I focused on building fresh books, and uh, but along the way, I've met you know thousands of our customers, and you know, there's some themes that come up again and again and again and again. And I thought about you know, um, people seem to really wrestle with how to price and position their services. You know, it's it's not well understood how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was very successful with that when I ran my design consulting firm. We would, you know, price our, our services 
uh, you know, based on the impact we were going to have for our clients. So we had to research and ask them, well, why are you doing this project? And, you know, what are you hoping to achieve? And then we would build our pricing based on, okay, we think we can help you achieve that to this extent. Maybe it's a 1% improvement, maybe it's a 10% improvement. And therefore, we think the project is worth why. Uh, and that kind of thinking is not common in my experience amongst most small business owners. No, it's not. And so, you know, for me, it was transformational. It made me, you know, frankly, uh, um, a real partner to my clients, and they kept coming back to have us do more things. And I thought, you know, if I can capture the spirit of this and explain this concept um, to small business owners, then, you know, they could use it to better run their business uh, and, frankly, you know, position and price their services more effectively, uh, and also feel like you're moving beyond a billable hour. Like, through all my design years, I almost never track time on projects. I always just had a project price based on an outcome I was trying to deliver for a client. And uh, that meant I wasn't dealing with, you know, living under the billable hour and timesheets and having those really awkward conversations with clients when the bill is much, much higher than they expected. But, you know, they asked for a whole bunch of changes at the end, right. and so it's kind of their fault, but they don't want to hear it. Right. <laughs> All that really ugly stuff um, that just takes the fun out of doing the work you love. Um, anyway, so I said, you know, if I could share the stuff I learned and help people avoid all that, I'd love to do it. And so I sat down with a guy named Donald here at FreshBooks, and together we wrote a book. You know, I love it, and I, I have to say, as I was reading through it, so many of the conversations I've had with my with my members and my own coaching clients, just it was these echoes of the same conversations. You're very right. Um, I think many of us who, especially have dropped out of corporate America, have been brainwashed in a way to think that we are supposed to work by the hour because that's how corporate America values us. And, you know, breaking through that mindset and thinking differently is a huge challenge for a lot of people. You know, how did you, you know, you say you, you never really had that problem with the dollars per hour. What was, what went on before you started your business that you didn't get that brainwashing mindset? Well, I guess the first thing was I've never really worked for anybody else. There you go. Um, so I didn't really know how to do what I did. And to be honest, in the early years, that probably hurt me more than it helped me. Um, because I probably would have made more if I charged by the hours in the early years, but I didn't. I always did just a project rate. Okay, so I said, hey, this is what I think this project is worth. I didn't ask the client. I didn't do any kind of investigation. I just hung a price on this thing I was going to deliver them, and if they said yes, then I did the work. Um, so I didn't start it with an hourly kind of mindset, and frankly, i got to tell you, when you're just starting out, Working by the hour is a terrible deal for your client because you're not very efficient and you're not very effective and you don't know what's going on and you're, you know, like there's just a whole bunch of problems with it. But as you get more experienced and you learn your craft and your discipline, well then, you know, the billing by the hour starts to work against you because you are really efficient and you are really strategic and you've seen this problem before and you can solve it really quickly. But if you just price yourself based on time, you don't get credit for all that. No. So, um, yeah, so I, I guess the, the short answer is I started out billing by projects, and then I just figured out how to do a better job of articulating why I priced my things a certain way over time. Excellent. You know, and that's a great point. Um, not all designers, not all writers are the same. There's a level of experience. There's a level of education that goes. Each one has something different to bring to the table, and that needs to be part of the pricing conversation. Um, I really love part of what you talk about in there as you get into the conversation is actually, you know, we hear the term value pricing or value-based pricing a lot, but you really kind of dig into it in your book in how you talk about, well, what is this, what is this website development or whatever the project is? How is that going to change your business? How is that going to earn, you know, what is your outcome? You know, getting really clear on those things. Um, do you find having those conversations a little difficult? Uh, do you have a formula that you use that you suggest? So there's a, there's a couple quick things. So we're talking about this book, and it may sound like a big, heavy thing in big technical terms like value-based pricing, but it's actually, it'll take you probably 45 minutes to an hour to read. Uh, 
the intent of the book is to basically just have you think differently about your business and how you, you, you sort of price yourself and frankly how you create value for your clients right I, I don't think I, I guess I you know uh, being an, I, I think I'm an entrepreneur at heart and as much as I've always loved the crafts I perform I think I'm an entrepreneur at heart and I sort of put my client at the center of everything and then work back from there and a lot of what I did in that book was just try to teach people, you know, more effective ways of putting themselves in their clients' shoes and what their clients are really thinking about. So what you're asking me now is, hey, is there some formula or some approach you take to drawing out from your client, like what kind of an impact you're going to have for them, uh, basically understanding the problem from their side of things? And, you know, I, I think the short answer is, you know, not really, but I think directionally, uh, you know, I think you have to bring a, an investigative and problem-solving kind of mindset. You know, chances are if you're talking to a prospective client, you know, they're interested in doing some kind of a project for some kind of reason. And a lot of people will just sit down and be like, okay, you, you're interested in a website. I build websites for 3000 5000 and 10000 right? And, you know, I, I think that's foolhardy. I think what you need to do is say, okay, client, what are you hoping to achieve? Can you tell me more about this project, right? You know, and that can be sometimes, well, when do you want it delivered? All right. And so what department is it for and what are their goals for the year? Like, because any project you do, like, your client has expectations and they have goals. They just may not have told you what they are. Right? Or alternatively, and I found this a lot in dealing with my small business customers, they knew they needed a website, but they didn't know why and they didn't know what to expect. And so I would help them with that as well. Um, we could talk about things that we could do or not do for them that would make a meaningful impact on their business. Um, so I don't know if that's the most direct answer or if I started to cover things there, Barbara, but... Uh, um, yeah, no, that's great. That's great insight. And I love, you know, it's true that a lot of, especially small businesses, really don't know how to work with a designer or a writer or a creative in other aspects either. They really don't know what to expect. And so it is your job to come in and kind of guide them through. I love the um, advice that you give in your book uh, where I think it's Karen who says, you know, I never talk price at the beginning. If they want a price, we don't go there. And I think that's very important. It goes along with what you were just saying, is you can't really give them a price if you don't know what they really want. Yeah, I, I think it's very easy to jump to an answer, but it might not be the right answer. Like, you might be doing your client an enormous disservice because by saying, yeah, it's going to cost this much and here's what it is, but, you know, without really, like, seeking to understand first, Right? Right. Um, you run the risk of, you know, building something that the client didn't want in the first place. And, you know, there's some stat out there, like, I don't know, 50% of IT projects, you know, fail or go over budget or don't deliver what was intended or something like this. And, you know, this is why, right? It's exciting to build something. You know, sometimes people get it, like, I think it's, sorry, I keep going back to web design. We can talk about it in, in other terms. Maybe it's a messaging campaign. Yes. Right? Clients will often get excited about the prospect of working on something creative and just get caught up in the building process. But you know what? Like, there's no point in building something unless it, it delivers the desired outcome, unless it's designed to be successful. And, you know, you can't design that program without first understanding, you know, what are the goals at the end of this thing? You know, who's the customer? All these kinds of things that really go into uh, to delivering great work for clients. So uh, I, I find that people tend to shortchange that, uh, that exploratory part of the relationship. And I'll tell you something, you know, in all fairness, and I didn't get into this too much in the book, but you have to do a lot more work up front yes. if you want to do things this way. And so you could do a bunch of work up front that people might not take you on as their, you know, their, their vendor. And you have to be prepared to say, okay, well, I sunk a bunch of time into building a proposal, understanding somebody's business. I didn't get the business. You know, I'll get them next time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a real possibility with this approach. But uh, the point I'm really driving at is it does take an investment on your part up front to, to understand what it is your client's looking to, uh, to achieve and then figuring out, 
if or how you can deliver it. And when I say if, I mean it. I had projects that I wouldn't do because I just couldn't deliver for my client. And I think that's the wrong thing there too. So uh, again, another reason why it's really important to, to properly understand before you proceed. Well, you know, and you hit on a couple, I think, really important parts there is, one, you really need to know yourself and know exactly what your strengths are and what you can deliver. And then it also, if I, you know, heard you correctly, you need to know your clients and, you know, kind of the, be really targeted on your niche, knowing who you're talking to. And in that way, maybe you didn't get one job, but the work that you put into that is going to be you know, ammunition that you can use on the next one because your clients will be fairly similar. Yes, yes. I would go so far as to say it sounds like you've done this work before, Barbara. But, I have. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's exactly right. You, you know, I think, uh, you know, it is reusable work and it's reusable lessons and, you know, really, you know, your clients can educate you about their space. And if they don't, like, you're not trying hard enough. And, uh, you know, you can take that work sort of with you to another place. And, you know, and that's a good thing because you're going to be more effective for that next client. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. Um, but, yes, everything you said there is true. You know, and another little piece of, of gold that I'm pulling out of what you're saying here is, you know, this is really a way to empower our self-employed professional or our creative professional into being the CEO of their business rather than the worker bee. You know, the worker bee just is kind of like job seeking. They just want the, the project. They're not really, you know, it's coming almost from a place of fear, really, where the CEO is a little more strategic. They know they've got a solution. They just want to make sure it's for the right problem. Yeah, I mean, I think that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, frankly, it's a lot of fun, too, because, um, you know, while you're sort of developing that strategic capacity within yourself, you're going to learn a lot, right? You're going to think differently about mm -hmm. the world and certainly someone else's industry because you're going to learn about it. And it'll sort of expand your horizons, make you more well-rounded, and, and at the end of the day, frankly, more valuable. So you can, you know, probably charge more on the next project. Well, you know, and there's, that is really, I think, a really incredibly powerful, beautiful thing, really, because you, you gain that confidence as you move forward in your business as well. And I know a lot of self-employed people kind of operate from a place of fear. And yeah. what we're talking about here really is how to empower yourself so that you can move forward confidently with your business. Yeah, and I, I think uh, I'll say a couple things because, uh, you know, if you read the book, like just putting a higher price tag on your prices or what have you, is mm -hmm. it's, it's not the solution. Whatever you quote your client, you then have to go and deliver, right? And that's very important, and there's a whole bunch of things you need to do to deliver effectively for your client, manage their expectations and all that good stuff. But, yeah, the idea here is that you – make really discreet and clear milestones, deliverables, and outcomes. And, you know, uh, and that might sound like a lot of work, but they can be really, really simple. Um, and, and then when it's done, you can sit back and the client can sit back and you can both say, hey, together we did this. We did this work we set out that said that we would at the start. You know, we predicted it would have this kind of an impact on the business, and by golly, it did. Mm -hmm. And nothing breeds, you know, confidence like success, right? Like, you, and you can build on that project to project to project. And I think, um, I, I also think, you know, you're talking about fear. So I'm going to go back to the billable hour for a second. Like, mm -hmm. when you're billing by the hour, you're really at the other side of the table from your customer. Mm -hmm. You know, every minute that you spend on something is a minute that's costing them something. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I really like about working on a project basis, you know, using value-based, uh, you know, billing is, you know, you're very aligned. You know, once they sign off on that project, your price is not going up and down, right? It's like you are now accountable to deliver that thing. And if it gets delivered, you know, you're going to, your business is going to see the impact. So there's this incredible sense of alignment that gets achieved. And so I find that, you know, and that builds confidence too, because now I don't have to worry about being at opposite of the table for my client partway through the project when I got to bring the bill around. It was all really specific and lined out up front and, you know, you're going to deliver what you said you did and then get paid for it. And, you know, I, I feel like it really, you know, it sort of balances things out, uh, brings a great deal of alignment, which then fosters trust. 
because, you know, we're not at opposite sides of the table, as I say. That's really an excellent point, and I, I think that you're true – you know, true, truly online there with the uh, being a partner with your client, and that's definitely going to get your client talking about you in positive ways to other people that might hire you. So, you know, that's a great message there. You're right. This book yeah. is a quick read. It, it is a it is a quick and easy read, and and does some real has some really great mind changing pieces in there. Let me ask, what's what's coming up next for you in FreshBooks? Well, uh, the main thing is to continue trying to get the word out, to be honest. So, um, you know, we, I started almost 10 years ago. Uh, I spent three and a half years in my parents' basement. After that, we had 10 paying customers. <laughs> now, since we've started now, over 5 million people have used the service. And uh, But I still don't feel like we've gotten anywhere yet. It's still really early. So I'm just working really hard to... You know, try and get the word out there and, you know, try and make FreshBooks successful. So no specific news item, just uh, more of an ongoing, uh, you know, campaign. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say with regards to the ebook, uh, we're about 21 days in and, you know, over, uh, you know, uh, the last number I saw posted, but the number's higher than this now, over 79,000, uh, was it 79,000? Well, I, I know, you know, over, like, uh, anyways, 79,000 people have downloaded the book, wow. um, which is incredible. And so we're looking forward to, I'm hoping we had a night, like, I wasn't expecting the numbers to get so high. Um, but, I, you know, I'm hopeful that, you know, well within 90 days, we'll have 100,000 people have uh, uh, downloaded the book. Uh, and so that's a big milestone we're looking forward to. And, you know, I really encourage anyone who's listening to go just... Uh, if you search for uh, Breaking the Time Barrier and, and Fresh Books, it's at breakingthetimebarrier.freshbooks.com. Uh, you can download the book for free. It's free for anybody to read. Uh, and we encourage you, if you do find it valuable, to then go back and, and pay what you think it's worth. And many people have done that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a 45-minute read. It's, it's supposed to help you with this transition of how to think about uh, pricing and positioning your services so effectively you can better align yourself with your clients and uh, hopefully make more money and enjoy what you do better. Well, you know, and I, I have to give you my, my kudos. I really thought it was a great book. I especially loved the seven mutual benefits of exploring value with your clients that you go into and kind of alliterate a little bit on each one. I think it's really a powerful high value that is in that book. So I, I certainly will help with getting the word out for you. You know, I think there's a great message there, and it's certainly one of my messages that I that I try to get to my clients and my members as well. So let me ask, you know, we've just got a few more minutes here. Let me ask, you said you're not quite where you'd like to be. If you could define what that would be, what, what would you like Fresh Books to become? What would that be? So... You know, I think of, uh, you know, I think of small business owners, and there's like 30 million in the USA, yeah. right? Only 5 million or so are using any form of accounting software today. And that includes, that number includes the people who, you know, bought the software and, and you know, didn't even open it. Yeah. Um, so the fact is, almost no one is using accounting software. Uh even though there's many millions of small businesses out there. So, you know, for me, you know, like our mission is to get the word out there. And frankly, you know, we want to become the new standard for small business owners to help them successfully run their business without having to learn accounting. And, uh, you know, that's going to take some time. <laughs> we have a long, long way to go to, to get there. And so in the process, as a, an entrepreneur, I want to build a, you know, a, a really – uh, strong, independent company, mm-hmm. right? That's a, that's a big goal of mine now. And we are not there yet. Um, we are an independent company and we're strong, but, you know, we're not, we're not a, of any significant scale and we're not helping only but a small fraction of the people who would really benefit from our help. So, so that's, that's where I'm at. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's why I say we're just getting the word out. We got to stick with it, and you know. But if we do, I believe uh, you know, uh, if we continue to take care of our customers and you know, win customer service awards and win design awards for our products, um, you know, and uh, you know, just keep doing more of the same. I believe we'll get there in time. 
Well, excellent. Well, I totally am on board with your mission there. I, I think that we're part of a global economy now. The Internet makes that possible. And so anytime that you can make money flow easier, especially for the individual entrepreneur, you know, the more powerful we're going to be. So so kudos to your mission, and, and we'll certainly do our part to help get the, get the word out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So, listeners, please jump on over to FreshBooks.com, pick up your uh, Breaking the Time Barrier book, and watch what's coming up next with uh, Mike McDermott and his crew. Is there any last words you'd like to share with us, Mike? Um, You know, I I will just say that uh, I encourage anyone who's out there running a business today to go try out FreshBooks. Uh, for free, just uh, go on over to freshbooks.com and really hope you enjoy it. And if you have any feedback for us, uh, you know, we are we are reachable by phone and email. We'd love to hear from you. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for joining me on Solo Pro Radio today. And, you know, make sure that you listen to us next time. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>